Now uh, we prove the last part of the theorem. Uh, part number four, D part, uh, which is uh, this K A equal to K A equal to A power M A power M A power M plus one so one up to A power M plus R minus one is a cyclic subgroup is a is a cyclic subgroup of monogenic semigroup generated by E. It is a cyclic subgroup of monogenic semigroup generated by E. Okay. So to prove it's a subgroup uh, we show that we show that we show that uh, we show that uh, let us denote this and this is denoted by k for any for any c comma d in k a in k a c by equal d has a solution has a has a solution in has a solution because it's it can be uh, trivially uh, shown that uh, this is a sub semi group of that uh, semi group generated by e that can be easily done so to prove it's a it's a group it's a subgroup first we have to prove that it's a cyclic subgroup actually first we prove it's a subgroup of k uh, uh, subgroup of a semi group generated by a so to prove it's a subgroup we need to prove that it has a solution this equation must has a solution in k a just we need to this equation the other equation uh, because it's instead of commutative so if we prove uh, if we prove uh, this equation has a solution then this equation y c equal to d has also a solution so this can be again done trivially using commutative property so we just prove this equation as a solution so let's choose any two points in k so let let c is equal to a power m plus u comma d is uh, is equal to a power m plus v belongs to k a so it means that uh, this u it lies between 0 to r minus 1 0 less or equal to u and v also lies between 0 to r minus 1 now uh, uh, since uh, since uh, 0 1 2 up to r minus 1 is a complete is a complete residue Modulo R. In fact, it's uh, in, they are all in Cronbert modulo R. It's a complete residue modulo R. By complete residue modulo R, we uh, so we mean that uh, if we choose any integer, any integer other than these uh, zero to R minus one, we can find an integer in this class such that that integer is congruent to the integer. So, uh, so let's uh, choose that integer. Uh, uh, suppose uh, we have a semester. Uh, is this v minus u uh, minus uh, m this is an integer this is an integer so we can choose choose an integer choose an integer x with 0 less or equal to x less or equal to 1 such that uh, choose an integer x such that x is congruent to v minus u minus m mod r Okay, so because it's a complete residue model R. So uh, now this uh, uh, they are congruent to uh, each other. X is congruent to this uh, model R. So uh, adding m on both sides, we get uh, m plus x is congruent to v minus m modulo R. B minus M modulo R. So uh, B, uh, sorry, it's V minus U. V minus U. Now adding U on both sides, it will be M plus X plus U is congruent to V mod R. Now they are both non-negative integers, and we know that if we have 
if the non negative integer is u and v if they are congruent to to each other congruent modulo r then a power m plus u is same as a power m plus v this is already done if u is congruent to v mod r then a power m plus u is congruent to a power m plus v so here we apply this result it is a power m plus m plus x plus u is equal to a power m plus v because this is a uh, u or u and that's v so a power uh, this uh, string this is u this u is congruent to v mod r then a power m plus u is congruent to a power m plus v mod r a power m plus v okay so this gives it's a power m plus u into a power m plus x is equal to a power m plus v so what what's a power m it is c c times a power m plus x is equal to a power m plus v where this a power m plus x it belongs to k a because this x it's zero less or equal to x less or equal to one as as zero less or equal to x less or equal to one so therefore the equation therefore the equation c y equal to d has a solution has a solution in k and hence and hence k a is a is a subgroup of monogenic semi group generator a so it is a subgroup next we prove that it's actually a cyclic subgroup it's not only a subgroup it is also a cyclic subgroup it's also a cyclic So for this, so we need to find its generator. Actually, so we need to find its generator. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now uh, this set zero one. To so one of R minus one is a complete residual modulo R. In fact, it's they they are also in congruent to each other modulo R. So this implies the set that you have already done in number number three course. The set M that's uh, adding M uh, to each number uh, M. M plus one, M plus two, M plus R minus one is also a complete residual modulo R. Residual modulo R. Now, ah, uh, we can find G uh, since ah. Uh, 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 since uh, since uh, one is an integer, so one is an, if one is an integer, then for every integer we can find an integer in this class such that that integer is congruent to one mod r. So we can choose some integer. Choose, choose, choose an integer. Choose an integer. G with zero less or equal to G less or equal to one, such that m plus G the integer in this set is congruent to one mod r. Is congruent to one mod r because for every integer in this set, uh, because for every integer outside of this set, this uh, uh, complete residual modulo r, we can find an integer in this uh, in this uh, in this complete residual modulo r such that that integer is congruent to the integer which is not in this set. So one is an integer. Which is not uh, in the set, uh, so that uh, so then the, we can find G such that M plus G is congruent to one more R. M plus G is congruent to one more R. Okay. It is uh, G is less or equal to R minus one. Sorry, G is less or equal to zero. Less or equal to G. Less or equal to R minus one. That gives K times. M plus G is congruent to K mod R. 
and you can see from this uh, uh, so uh, from this uh, we can see a power m plus g whole power k for k runs from 1 to up to r this it exhaust it exhaust whole k whole k so that is that is this k a is equal to a power m plus g whole power k where k is equal to 1 to up to r my up to r so which means that k is actually generated by a power m plus g so that you can easily uh, 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 do uh, using this uh, fact you have to use this fact u is component to v mod r if and only if a power m plus u is equal to a power m plus e and using the fact that uh, this set it's a, it's a, it's a complete residue model r you can easily do this so so this a power m plus g k varies from 1 to r it will exhaust whole k a that's k is actually a power m plus g power k where k runs from 1 to r so this gives uh, so therefore k a is a cyclic subgroup generated by it's a cyclic subgroup generated by a power m plus g so that is we can write as k a is equal to this a power m plus g next uh, we find its identity we find its identity also so to find its identity to find its identity so uh, we find we find an element in k which is an idempotent because the 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 uh, identity is the only idempotent of a group k is a group so its identity must be its idempotent element so let's find its idempotent element so to find its series uh, we choose uh, we choose z we choose z that an integer so that so that uh, so that this zero less or equal to z less or equal to r minus one and uh, and and this uh, z is congruent to minus m mod r so this also can be uh, because um, the set zero to r minus one it's uh, it's a complete residue model r which gives m plus z is congruent to zero mod r Okay, so which gives adding z on both sides m plus z plus z is congruent to z mod r. So that means a power m plus this is equal to a power m plus z. A power m plus m plus z plus z is equal to a power m plus z, which implies a power m plus z whole square is equal to a power m plus z. So that means a power m plus z is an item potent because its square is equal to the element itself. So which means, which means a power m plus z is an identity. Is an identity because it is an element of k actually. Z varies from 0 to r minus 1. So those elements are in k. So that uh, means this element is an identity of k a. It is an identity of k a. Okay. So next, uh, we illustrate this uh, with the help of an example. Here, uh, let's take an example. We find uh, uh, the cyclic group K for that example. Uh, so, so let uh, let x is equal to one, two, up to seven. Take seven elements. And Tx, it's a set of all mappings from x to x, b a semi group, b a, b a semi group of all transformations on x. It's a full transformation semi group. So let's choose an element in this, and then we find the monogenic semi group generated by that element. So let uh, let's choose this element. Let alpha, it's a map. We are we, ex we write each map in two-road notation, okay? 
so we take one two three four five six seven then in the second row uh, second row the elements in the second row are the images in the elements of the first row so let's uh, let's take this uh, my uh, say image of one is two image of two is three suppose uh, image of uh, three is four and image of four is five image of five is six okay image of six is seven and image of seven is five so it's not it's not permutation because uh, the image of four and seven it is same five five it's it's a many one map it's a many one map so uh, the this is the representation of maps in the tx uh, it's two row representation in as in case of our permutation groups uh, we have two row notation so same uh, we use here uh, the two row notation of transformation on x okay then uh, one can easily calculate that then you can easily calculate this the composition map then one is alpha square is equal to alpha square is equal to 1234567 so what's the image of 1 it's 3 you can easily do this uh, this is not too difficult 2 image of 2 is 4 image of 3 is 5 image of 4 uh, is 6 okay image of 5 uh, is 7 and image of 6 is 5 and image of 7 is 6 this is alpha square then you can see this alpha cube is equal to image of 1 is 4 image of 2 is 5 then 3 uh, goes to 6 and 4 goes to 7 okay then 5 uh, it will go to 5 and 6 uh, will go to 6 Okay, six will go to six and seven goes to seven. Okay. Then you can see this alpha four is equal to alpha power four. It's a uh, one goes to five. Two will go to six, and uh, three will go to seven, and four uh, will go uh, to uh, five. Okay, five, and five will go to six. Then five. Then we have six. Six will go to seven, and seven goes to seven goes to five. Okay. This alpha power four. And then you can find alpha power five. Alpha power five is one goes to six. Two goes to seven. Two goes to seven. Three goes to five. Three goes to five. Four goes to six. Okay. Four goes to six. Five goes to seven. Six goes to five. Seven goes to six. Okay. Next, we find alpha power uh, six. Uh, alpha power six. So there, uh, uh, there is no repetition in these elements. So we have to continue this process until we don't have a repetition. So, if, so when we have a repetition, uh, then we can find its index in period. Once we have a repetition, okay. It's a uh, one uh, goes to seven. Two goes to two goes to five. Three goes to six. Three goes to six. Four goes to seven. Four goes to seven. Five goes to five. Six goes to six. Seven goes to seven. So again, uh, we don't have repetition uh, here. Next, we have power seven, which is equal to one goes to five. Two goes to six. Okay, two goes to six. Three goes to seven. Four goes to five. Five goes to six. And then uh, six goes to seven, and seven goes to five. Now there is a repetition because uh, you, can, you can see this alpha power four image of one is five here image of one is five image of two is six here two six three image of three is seven image of three is seven image of four is five image of four is five here. Image of five is six, and image of five is six here. Image of six is seven, and here it is seven. Image of six is seven. Seven is five. So that means that means alpha power four is equal to alpha power seven, and which is same as alpha power four plus three. So therefore, what's the index? Index of this monogenic semigroup generated by alpha index index m is equal to four here and period. 
r is equal to 3 a that a, a power m is equal to a power m plus r that m is the index and r is the period so for this uh, uh, so therefore uh, <coughs> therefore uh, therefore the index and period of the monogenic semigroup generated by alpha is 4 and 3 respectively 4 and 3 respectively now what's what will be k a here k alpha here sorry k alpha k alpha is uh, actually it's equal to it starts from alpha power m so m is here 4 it's alpha power 4 alpha power 5 alpha power 6 just these three elements 4 4 plus 1 4 plus m plus r minus 1 okay here r is 3 so m plus 3 minus 1 that's m plus 2 m is here 4 4 plus 2 is 6 so it's a it's this is a cyclic group is a cyclic subgroup is a cyclic subgroup of that monogenic semigroup generated by alpha it's a cyclic subgroup now we can uh, find uh, its identity what's what's its identity as uh, we have seen uh, its identity is uh, uh, its identity as uh, we have already seen that uh, its identity is this uh, a power m plus z where z is an integer so that m plus z is congruent to so we find z so that m plus z is congruent to 0 mod r now uh, m plus z is congruent to so how, how, how can we do this m is here 4 4 plus z should be congruent to 0 mod r r is here 3 so that means this z must be 2 because 4 plus 2 is congruent to 0 mod 4 plus 2 so that means z is equal to 2 so when z is equal to 2 therefore therefore alpha power that a power m plus z is an identity a power m plus z alpha power m plus z m is here 4 4 plus z z is here 2 which means alpha power 6 is an identity so alpha power 6 is identity of k alpha power 6 is identity of k alpha sorry k alpha next uh, we try to find uh, uh, we try to find uh, its uh, uh, its generator okay next we try to find its generator what's the generator of this so here generator is actually a power m plus g what's this g actually uh, uh, we see this g is equal to what's g so g is an integer such that m plus g is congruent to 1 mod r now we find g such that Now we find G such that uh, such that uh, this M plus G we find G such that M plus G is congruent to 1 mod R. What's M? M is here 4. 4 plus G is congruent to 1 mod R. R is 3. Okay. So this means what will be G then? G must be equal to 7. G must be equal to 3. Because for G equal to 3, 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 is congruent to 1 mod 3. So G must be equal to 3. So this implies alpha power m plus G is the generator here. Yeah? Alpha power a power m plus G is the generator. Sorry. A power m plus G is the generator. A in this case in, in our example is alpha. Alpha power m plus G is the generator where m is the index. Where m is the index. Index is uh, in our case index is 4. So alpha power 4 plus g, what's g? g is an integer such that m plus g is congruent to 1 mod r and here our g is 3. So alpha power m plus g means alpha power m is here 4, 4 plus g is 3, that's called alpha power 7. But alpha power 7 is same, it's equal to alpha power 4. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's alpha power 7 here. Alpha power 7, sorry, it's here it's alpha power 4. I think. Alpha power 4 is here. Alpha power 4 is equal to alpha power 7, which is called alpha power 4 plus 3. So alpha power 7 is actually alpha power 4. It's equal to alpha power 4. Alpha power 4, it's the generator. Alpha power 4 is the generator of Ka. It's the generator of Ka.
alpha power 4 is the generator of k a what is all this uh, alpha power k a it is the generator of uh, uh, so is the generator of is the generator of k a which is equal to here alpha 4 alpha sorry it is 4 here alpha power 5 alpha power 6 so that first element is the generator and this is the identity so oh, this is the end of the theorem. Thank you.